Hello, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our Women's Sunday School Lesson Channel. I want to welcome you all back to our channel. Y'all see I have my little baby with me. This is Miss Addie. This is a new addition to my family. And she is uh, wanting to hear the message just like you guys. So welcome to all of my new people. Thank you for uh, coming and uh, be a part of this channel. You could have selected any channel, but you chose this one. And I'm very thankful for that. And for those that have been going along this journey with me for this uh, for a long period of time since we started I thank you guys for continuing to go along with me uh, so let us start out and get into this lesson with a word of prayer all right Addie let's pray Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. I thank you, Lord God, for uh, just being in the midst of us, oh God, as we dive into your word, Lord God, and glean from it what you would have for us for today. Lord God, if we've done anything outside of your will, I ask you to forgive us right now. And then, Father God, I just come to you right now praying that you would set me aside, Lord God, and you speak through me, Lord God as I give this message that you have given to me. Father God, I give you the glory and the honor, Lord God, for all that you have done, all that you're doing right now, and all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name, thank God and amen. Okay, family, so the title of our lesson today is Birth of the Forerunner. That's the title of our message, and we have several scriptures that we're going to get into. The first scripture is going to be um, Luke 1. 157 through 64 and 67 through 79. That is our, our reference text scripture. I'm going to read that one and I'm going to read it from uh, the, the study so that we can have context for the lesson. And it says, um, let me turn this down. There you go. And it says, I think Addie Baby wants to go take a nap. So let me lay her down for a second. Hold on. There you go, Addie. Lay down, Mama. All right. So then it says, now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered and she brought forth a son and her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy on, upon her and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child and they called they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called John. And they said unto her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. And they made signs to his father how he would have him called. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote saying, his name is John. And they marveled all. And his mouth was open immediately and his tongue loosed and he spake and praised God. And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied it saying, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he had visited and redeemed his people and had raised, uh, raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spat by the mouth of his holy prophet, which which have been since the world begun, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Thou art which he, he sued to our father Abraham that he will grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives. And thou child shall be called the prophet of the highest for thou, for thou said go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day springs from our high heights visit us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. 
So that was our lesson text. We also have some related scriptures. And you know these related scriptures, they go along with our text. Uh, I will give them to you and you can go back and see where uh, they apply. I'll give you a, a, a few little nuggets that go along with those scriptures. Our first related scripture is going to be coming from Ruth 4. 13 through 17 and this speaks of uh, the birth of another son Obed from the line of Jesse and David born from Ruth and Boaz who is the guardian redeemer for Naomi and so we read about the uh, the redeemer uh, also uh, in this uh, account in Luke as well so that's kind of uh, um, uh, a reference to go back on in this root uh, in this root chapter, our next related scripture is Genesis twenty two fifteen through eighteen, uh, because of Abraham's obedience in giving of his own one and only son, all nations on earth were blessed, uh, and so that's talking about uh, uh, when um, when uh, Abram when Abraham had was uh, bringing Isaac to be sacrificed, right? Then our next one is Isaiah 43 through 5, and this speaks uh, Isaiah's prophesied about John's birth. So Isaiah prophesied about what was going to uh, happen in the in the future and then when we got to John 1 6 through 9 and uh, 19 through 27 that's our next related scripture it speaks of John's purpose in verse 7 it says he came uh, he came as a witness to testify concerning uh, that light which is Jesus the light of the world so that through him all might believe and in verses 19 through 27 John replied to the question question of who he was in uh in the spoken by the prophet Isaiah in uh chapter 40 of Isaiah so uh those are just our related scriptures again I, like I tell you guys take those related scriptures and go back and look at and and see how they relate to our study on today uh for our study we have the aim the the uh, today's aim, which is the facts, the principle, and the application. The fact is to see that nothing is impossible with God. The principle to know that God will always do what he has promised, no matter how unlikely we may think it is. And the application to help us see that we can trust God in all that he says, knowing by faith he will accomplish what he sets out to do introducing this lesson on today in last week's lesson we studied the uh, meeting between mary the mother of jesus and elizabeth the mother of john the baptist this week we will study the actual birth of john the focus of this lesson however is on the reaction of john's father zacharias to the birth of his son right okay so in this lesson on today uh for for our study there's going to be two major themes for this lesson the first one is the birth of john the baptist and that is going to be uh in luke 1 57 through 64 and we have three points that go along with that one and then the second um theme is the prophecy of Zacharias and that's in Luke 1 67 through uh, 79 and there is four points that go along with that one so let's dive right on in uh, the birth of John and again like I said there's three points the first point is uh, the son born and it says at the time of his appearance to Zacharias Gabriel has said fear not Zacharias for thou prayer is heard and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son and thou shall call his name John and you saw that in verse 13 that prophecy is now confirmed by Luke's declaration now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered and she brought forth a son word of this event spread quickly causing friends and relatives to rejoice over the miracle of the pregnancy one reason for such rejoicing was the fact that Elizabeth 
that had been barren all her life that was now a special evidence of God's blessing upon her, her husband, and their marriage. The other reason was that uh, many Jewish women hoped to give birth to a son, thinking that he might be the promised Messiah of Israel. Gabriel's announcement, though, had established that Elizabeth's son would not be the Messiah, but his forerunner. John's birth is tied to the coming of Jesus Christ, the Savior of all humanity. Now, the second point is the son named. When God established his covenant with Abraham, he required the circumcision of every boy born, every boy born at eight days old. Consider their son's special role in God's plan. Therefore, Zacharias and Elizabeth were very careful to, vi to follow the law when they, uh, when they gathered everyone together on the eighth day to circumcise him. This was also the day when a baby's name was revealed. So it was assumed by all those gathered that this would happen as well. Moreover, it was traditional to name a baby boy after his father. So they naturally assumed he would be named Zacharias. Elizabeth spoke up immediately, however, and informed them that he, that the baby's name would be John. The family and friends immediately retorted that there was nobody in their family with that name. They did not know that God had already directed the parents in the naming of this son, of this baby. The son's name confirmed. Okay, that's our third and final point for under this topic, under this theme. It was normally the father who took the lead in the circumcision ritual and naming of the son. The logical thing to do then was to ask Zacharias what he wanted. He had not heard the exchange between the gathering visitors and Elizabeth. Therefore, they had to ask his opinion when with hand gestures. In order to answer, Zacharias had to write his response, so he motioned for a writing tablet. On the tablet, he wrote, his name is John, shocking everyone present. The moment Zacharias wrote down his name, Gabriel's earlier disciplinary judgment was reversed. He was immediately able to speak and no doubt also to hear. He had completely obeyed God's command, so the temporary limitations he had experienced was now gone. The first word out of his mouth were words of praise to God. The last words he had spoken had been words of skepticism and doubt, but that frame of mind was long gone now. Okay, and our second theme, uh, the prophecy of Zacharias, there are four points for this one. The first point is a horn of salvation. Zacharias was suddenly filled with the Spirit of God and prophesied it through a song of his own. Zacharias said God should be blessed. He then gave reasons for this. His first reason was that God had visited and redeemed his people. Zacharias also recognized that God was raising up a horn of salvation for his people and that it was coming upon the descendants of David. Horns are a symbol of power. So this horn of salvation signifies the coming of the Messiah and his powerful accomplishment of their redemption. The next point, covenant fulfilled. Zacharias' song looked beyond the birth of his new son to the Messiah this son was going to introduce. It was not John who would be the horn of salvation for Israel, but rather the Messiah soon to follow. The Abrahamic covenant was an unconditional covenant in which God promised Abraham that he would become a great nation, that his name would be great, that he would be a blessing to others, that those who who cursed him would be cursed, that those who blessed him would be blessed, and that all the earth would be blessed through him and his descendant. This covenant was later expanded and then reiterated to Abraham's son's son Isaac and his grandson Jacob. Jacob received his reminder as he was fleeing from Esau and had a dream in Genesis 28, 10 through 17. Once again, God spoke of the land and many descendants. Upon waking, he was afraid and acknowledged God's very presence in that place. 
This is the covenant Zechariah was remembering. He finalized that God was extending his mercy to his people just as he had promised. Our third uh, point is uh, Israel's deliverance. One of the promises of God to Abraham was deliverance from the hands of their enemies and the resulting freedom to serve God without fear. In Zechariah's mind, the result of their deliverance from uh, enemies would be freedom to serve God in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of his life. And that's in Luke 1 and 75. And our final point is light for the world. Zacharias understood that his son was going to be the prophet of the Messiah. Uh, he would be the forerunner announcing his presence and helping to prepare the way for Israel to receive him. John's ministry would be unique as the only one to prepare for him this way. Zacharias also understood that this would be the means of salvation for his people and the way for their sins to be forgiven. All this was evident of the great mercy of God being extended to his people. Zacharias spoke of the Messiah as, as the day spring from on high, a rising of light like the dawn in the, in the eastern sky. The people were living in darkness, but a new day and new light was coming. Zacharias specifically spoke of the dark conditions in which the people were living, comparing it to the shadow of death. In darkness, we cannot see to find our way anywhere. And such was the spiritual darkness of God's people in those days. Zacharias' son was arriving to announce the coming of the one who would provide spiritual light for all. Then we have our practical points for the lesson. We have six practical points on today. The first one says, God reveals himself to the world through his works in our lives. Number two, God is not bound by human traditions, customs, and expectations. Number three, obedience to God frees us to worship him as we should. Number four, God's our praise, is, our praise is both a gift from God to his redeemed people and a gift from those people back to him. Number five, God's strength in us empowers us to serve him boldly and righteously. And the last one, number six, God has given every believer a role in his work for his glory. Then we have our research and discussion questions. We have four questions on today. Let me prepare and get them together for you. Okay. Our first question is, how were children viewed by the Jews of John's day? And first, um, I wanted to read a scripture from uh, Psalms 1, 27 and 3, which says, Sons are a heritage from the Lord. Children are rewards from him. I believe the same applies today. Children are a gift from God, no matter the circumstances of their conception or birth. Number two. Can you name some of the traditions or custom commonly observed in Christian life and worship? What purposes do these traditions serve? In view of the life of a Christian on tradition that come, one tradition that comes to mind is the dedication of a baby. The purpose is that the parents and all connected to the child will ensure that they will grow up in the ways of God. They will be taught the word of God in hopes that they will, as Proverbs 20 2 and 6 says, start children off on the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will not turn from it. So that is just one tradition that I can think of that we do today. Um, number three, it says, what did the promise of the Redeemer mean to God's people? And it meant freedom from oppression. And I'm going to read to you Luke 4 and 18. Luke 4 and 18 says, 
the spirit of the Lord is on me because he was he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom from the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to release the oppressed. And the uh, the last question that we have is, and it's a three point question, part question, and it says, "What does it mean that Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost? How did this filling affect his service and worship to God? And how are we filled with the Spirit today?" And so the answer that I have is, the filling of the Holy Ghost was the dwelling of the Spirit of God within that enabled Zachariah to speak as the Lord would have him. This filling enabled Zachariah to share with the people prophecy, which is the foretelling of what's to come from God. I believe today we are filled with the Spirit just as with Zacharias. The Spirit's dwelling comes upon us when we position ourselves to receive it, being out, being uh being about our father's business, just as Zechariah. And I want to go to Luke 1, 8 to 11 and read that to you. And it says, once when Zechariah's division was on duty, he was serving a, as priest before God. He was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of the incense came, all the assembly worshiper worshipers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing at the right, right, right side of the altar of incense. So, that was my answer to that because Zacharias was in the temple praying to God, doing what he was supposed to do. He was in position and the angel came to him and spoke to him at that time. Um, I pray that something from this lesson uh, really uh, um, helps you to understand what took place at that time before the before our Savior's birth. And on next week, we will definitely get into uh, the birth of our Savior, which, which is right in line with right before our Christmas celebration, which is the reason why we celebrate during this season. So I pray that something uh, here uh, really uh, encourages you. Let us go ahead and close out in a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this message. I thank you, Lord God, for this time that you have given me. And I pray right now, Lord God, that it touches the life of someone, Lord God, and it shows them, Lord God, or encourages them to dig deeper in your word, Lord God, to truly see um, the life of, of, of Christ, Lord God, and how it uh, applies to our lives. So, Father God, I just pray right now that you get the glory out of everything that uh, you are, are encouraging us to do, especially through your word, oh God. I pray right now, Lord God, that everything that is said is as you, as you intended it, Lord God, and I pray that it is received as you would have it to be received, Father. I give you the glory and the honor and the praise and the thanks, Lord God, for using me. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, family, remember, remember. You go out and have a blessed rest of your day. And always remember that I love you with the love of the Lord. Bye. Bye.